Welcome to Biology Access. In today's class, we'll be talking about the sub-kingdom protozoa. Protozoa, which uh, means first animal, are actually a diverse group of different unicellular animals. This group is actually a polyphyletic group, meaning they originate from different ancestors. Their characteristics include they are actually microscopic as we know them, they are unicellular organisms, majority of them are unicellular organisms, and some of them are, or majority, many of them are actually heterotrophic, while some, few, such as in Euglenozoa, are actually what, um, autotrophic, or even some in dinoflagellate. Then we also have, we also know that majority of them, or they lack cell wall, not majority of them, they actually lack cell wall. Some of them do have a shell-like structure. Example of protozoa actually include the amoebae, the paramecium, the euglena, the leishmania, and all that. Classification of protozoa. Classification of protozoa. Protozoa is actually a sub-kingdom and is divided into various clades. And when I mean clad, I mean organism that possess or that originate from a single ancestor. And the clad include Aviolata, the Amoeboid, Protozoa, the Excavata. The Aviolata group comprises of the following phyla, the Cilophora, the Dinoflagellata, and the Epicomplexa. While the Amoeboid Protozoa clad consists of the following phyla, the Amoebozoa, Foraminifera, the Radiolaria, and the Secozoa. Take note that these three groups is actually placed under a superphyla called the Rizaria, while the last uh, clad is the Excavata, which comprises of the Euglenozoa, Parabesalia, and Heterolobosi. All right. Take note that this classification is actually gotten from recent literature. There are various classifications, as you know that the field of taxonomy and classification is actually an evolving field, but this is a recent classification. So, in the part one of the uh, protozoa class, I'll be talking about all the phyla in this aviolata. So, we'll start from the aviolata or the aviolate. The aviolate are actually a group of uh, protozoa that is characterized by the possession of a alveolar sac or the vesicular word sac. The clad aviolata comprises of the phylum ciliophora. Genoflagellata and the AP complex. As you know, as I've explained before, clad is actually a group of organisms that have a common ancestor. So, the Ciliophora. The Ciliophora is actually a group of unicellular protists that are structurally what? Complex. They are actually the most complex, structurally complex protozoa, possessing cilia. Their characteristics include possession of what cilia for movement. You can see the di diagram of paramecium on the board. It possesses cilia. They also exhibit what we call nuclear dimorphism. They exhibit what we call nuclear dimorphism. Nuclear dimorphism is a situation whereby they have different kinds of nucleus. In this case, two types, the micronucleus and the macro. Micro and the macro. Micro means small, macro large. The micro is usually responsible for reproduction, while the macro is responsible for what? Their day to day activities. The organisms are actually survive without the micronucleus, but cannot survive with the mac without the macro nucleus. They have other characteristics. They usually carry out um, a form of reproduction guide as well, the binary fusion. They can also carry out conjugation. They have a covering, they have a, a covering co uh, called what the pellicle, as you can see from the diagram on the board, and it has a fixed shape. Now, take note that all the groups are actually um, under the alveolata, which means that they possess the alveoli under what their membrane, under the outer what membrane, underneath the outer membrane. Other characteristics are highlighted on the board. Example of uh, the ciliates include the paramecium, apostatidium, pterocolata, and all that. To draw this organism, highlight the characteristics of Draw the, this organism, highlight the characteristics of the ciliate in it, and take note of the morphology. 
as well as studying how paramecium feed and highlight how paramecium carry out what nutrition. All right, the next phylum is what dinoflagellata. Dinoflagellata, which are actually a group of organisms that kind of possess a plant-like as well as animal-like characteristics. They have flagella for movement, which you know that animals are usually motor and they carry out some carry out autotrophic mode of nutrition, while others carry out what the heterotrophic what mode of nutrition. Their characteristics actually include the, the fact that they are unicellular. You know that you already know that some of them may be blue, green, various colors depending on the pigment that they produce. You can see the uh, color that they emit on the board. All right. Now they possess an outer covering. An outer covering called what? The amphysia. You can see the, the, the amphysia on the structure of what? The dinoflagellata that is displayed, that is being displayed on the board. The dinoflagellata have a nucleus that they call the dino what? Carrion. This nucleus is characterized by the chromosome being attached to the nuclear membrane. Some dinoflagellata actually is what we call the bioluminescence. That means they, they produce light and they emit it. That gives rise to the kind of colors that you can see. Sometimes the red or the blue tide that you see in the ocean. Some of them produces neurotoxin or saxitoxin. And they exhibit various, they produce various forms of what? Toxin in the aquatic environment, which can be harmful to aquatic what? Organisms. You can see from the display diagram of various forms of uh, bioluminescence being produced in the aquatic environment on the board. Example of the dinoflagellata include the Nautiluca species, the Serratian species, and all that. We also have the Alexandrum fudiensis, which produces what the saxi toxin, and the one that produces what the toxic what bloom. The last phylum. Under the Azulata is the phylum Epicomplexa. Now, the Epicomplexa is a unique group that possesses a unique feature called the Epica complex. The diagram of the Epica complex is displayed on the board with the various components. All right. Take note that this group is an exclusively parasitic group, except for these nephromice that are not so they are parasitic what avulate their characteristics include the fact that they possess i already mentioned before the apical complex we know that they are unicellular they are spore forming produces spore i mentioned before that they are what parasitic and the fact that they utilize they also utilize what the apical complex to what penetrate what their host cell take note of that they utilize the apical complex to penetrate their host cell example of the organism under the group include the plasmodium and various parasitic species that the bbc are various parasitic species parasitic species that you are displayed on the board so please i want you to draw the apical complex labeling the various component as assignments and any apical complex that any apical complex that means any organism in this group, labeling it and highlighting the characteristics of this group in the particular organisms. You can send your answer to my mail, which is always on the description of the channel. Thank you very much. In the part two of this series, we'll be discussing the other clad, which is the excavator as well as, well as the amoeboid protozoa. Thank you.